This is the second video that we're going to have a look at solving quadratic equations. And in this video, we're going to have a look at the second method that you can use to solve quadratic equations, which is completing the square. Now, one thing that you'll notice straight away when using this method to solve quadratic equations is that it's possibly the longest and most tedious method that you're going to learn in grade 11. However, it does have its uses because you'll see in the next video that we're going to use it to prove the quadratic formula, which is possibly the easiest method to solve quadratic equations. It also gives us a way of working out new and different standard forms of quadratic functions. And lastly, it's going to allow you to work with circles in analytical geometry in grade 12. So the way this method basically works is to take the standard form of a quadratic function, or a quadratic equation, I should say, of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, so our standard form, and we're going to look at these first two terms here, with the x and the x squared in them. And the question that you're basically going to need to ask yourselves is how can we turn this portion into a perfect square. So in other words, how can we get it into a bracket where we're going to have x plus or minus some number all perfectly squared? And that's why we call it completing the square, because we're basically asking ourselves, what do I need to add in over here after that ax squared plus bx so that I can get it to fit perfectly inside a bracket like that? And throughout this method, you'll see how we can actually find what that number needs to be, and then how we can use this new form to actually go ahead and solve quadratic equations. So as we go through it now, through the next few examples, make sure that you take note of the steps that we're going to use, because if you can learn those steps off by heart, then this method, even though it's long, is actually going to be really easy for you to work with. So let's look at the first example here. The question that we have is to solve for x in the equation 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0 by completing the square. Now, there are six steps that you need to make note of. They're going to come up on the screen in front of you now. Make notes of these steps and then follow along with me as we apply these steps in the question. So step number one for us is to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is 1. So if you look at the first term here, we've got 2x squared. We need to get rid of that 2 in front of the x squared so that the coefficient there is 1. And the way that we're going to do that is by dividing every term in this equation by 2. And of course, then the 2 in front of the x squared will cancel out. So after our first step, we're going to end up with x squared minus 5 over 2x minus 3 over 2 equals 0. And there's step number 1 done. The second step then is to take the constant, which is the negative 3 over 2, and move it over to the right hand side. And if we move it over, it's going to become positive. So we're going to end up with x squared minus 5 over 2x equals positive 3 over 2. The third step is now to figure out what number we need to add in on the left hand side to make that a perfect square. And to find that number, I want you to go to the side of your page and take the number that is next to the x. So in other words, the b value over there that I've circled in yellow. You want to take that number and divide it by 2. So if we go negative 5 over 2 divided by 2, we're going to get negative 5 over 4. And once you've divided it by 2, you're going to square it. And when you square it, we end up with 25 over 16. 
And that is the number that we need to add into the end to get a perfect square for the left hand side. But obviously because we're dealing with an equation, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So for step number four here, we take this value, this 25 over 16, and we add it to both sides of the equation. So there we'll have x squared minus 5 over 2x plus the 25 over 16. And that is going to be equal to the 3 over 2 we had before plus 25 over over 16. Step number five then is to factorize the entire left hand side. So that part that has been highlighted there, we want to factorize that perfectly. Now it might seem difficult at first, but we know that all we wanted to do was complete the square. So we wanted to go from this entire left hand side there to have a bracket that is perfectly squared. And we can do that. All we need to do is write out our bracket. And the number that goes inside the bracket, you can get straight from the step number three. That negative five over four there that I've highlighted in the bracket, you can take straight into the bracket and write it as negative five over four. And if you want to go and check it and foil that bracket out, you will end up with what we started with on the left hand side. So it's put perfectly factorized and it's just a little shortcut that you can use to help yourself. Then we can go and simplify the right hand side a little bit. So if we just add those two numbers together, we're going to end up with 49 over 16 and you can just use your calculator for that. And that leads us then on to step number six. And step number six is basically just to solve for the x inside the bracket there. And we can do that by square rooting both sides of the equation. But don't forget, when you square root both sides of an equation, you have to add in a plus or minus. And the reason for that, if you just cast your eyes to this side over here, you'll see that if we had an equation... If we had an equation, something like x squared equals 4, we know that to answer that, we would need to factorize it into x minus 2, x plus 2 equals 0. And then we get the answer x is equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 2. And so just to skip that factorizing step, we can root both sides but just make sure you add the plus or minus in front. And so once we've done that, you'll see that the square there will cancel with the whole square root. And so we'll be left with x minus 5 over 4 is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 49 over 16 is going to leave us with 7 over 4. And then we can move that 5 over 4 over. So x is equal to 5 over 4 plus or minus 7 over 4. And when we use the plus, we will get x is equal to 3. Because 5 over 4 plus 7 over 4 is equal to 3. And if we use the minus, you'll see that x is equal to negative a half. And so, guys, I hope you see that even though it was quite a long method to use, if you go and practice the steps that we went through over and over again, you will be able to solve these questions in the exams. This is the last example that we'll have a look at in this video. And this is probably the most difficult kind of completing the square that you're going to have when dealing with equations. We'll revisit completing the square a little bit later on when it comes to expressions. The reason that this kind of a question is so difficult is because now we've gone and replaced some of those numbers with letters or variables. So we've got M and N in this question, which tends to make it a bit more challenging. However, you've got six steps. And if you follow those six steps exactly the way we did when we had numbers, 
you're going to arrive at the right answer regardless. So let's work through it step by step and figure out what the answer will be. And just to give you a guideline as well, this is the kind of question where they may say solve for x in terms of m and n. So basically they want you to have m and n in the solution when you get an answer for x. So let's go ahead and do it. We know that step number one was to make sure that the coefficient of x squared was equal to one. So in this case, we've got an m in front of x squared. And to get rid of it, just the way we did in the previous example, we're going to divide every term by m. And when we do that, the answer out of our first step will give us x squared because of how the m's cancel out, x squared plus 3 over mx plus n over m equals 0. Then step number 2 was to take our constants and move them over to the right hand side. And you'll see there's a positive in front of that n over m. So when we move it over, it's going to become x squared plus 3 over mx equals negative m n over m. And then we go and complete the square. And the way you can do this is by taking the value in front of the x, which in this case is 3 over m. You divide it by 2, so that would give you 3 over 2m. And then you square it, which in this case would give you 9 over 2 squared is 4. And m squared is just going to end up as m squared. Then for the fourth step, it was to take this answer that we just worked out. So this 9 over 4m squared and add it on to both the left hand side and the right hand side. So we're going to have x squared plus 3 over mx and then we're going to add the 9 over 4m squared onto the right hand side, left hand side and that is equal to negative n over m plus 9 over 4 m squared. The next step was then to factorize this whole left hand side. So to factorize it, as I said before, open up your bracket, square it, write your x there, and simply take whatever is inside that bracket there from the third step. So whatever's inside that bracket, you can see it's positive this time. So it's going to be x plus 3 over 2m. And then let's go ahead and neaten up the right-hand side. So you can see to neaten up the right-hand side, we'll need to get an LCD. To do that, we'll multiply this term by 4m and the denominator there by 4m as well. And so when we neaten it up, it's going to be minus 4mn plus 9 over 4m squared, like so. Because our LCD is 4m squared for that part there. Then, just as before, step number 6 is to go ahead and square root both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. And when we do that, we're going to have x plus 3 over 2m is equal to plus or minus. And if we look at this fraction over here, the square root of minus 4mn plus 9 doesn't change. So we can actually rewrite it as we, if we want as 9 minus 4mn, like so. But the square root of the denominator, which is 4m squared, actually simplifies to be 2m. And you can see then that both the term there has a denominator of 2m and the term there has a denominator of 2m. So when I take this term over 
it's going to have the same denominator and so we can write it all over one fraction and so it'll be x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4mn all divided by that denominator of 2m so again these questions are quite difficult but you can see that if you combine your algebra knowledge with your fractions and then just follow those six, six steps on how to solve with completing the square, you will get the right answer at the end.